All right, so we have Nick Maximov versus Carl Roberson. So Nick Maximov on the feet, he's basically just looking to level change under your strikes. He doesn't really have too much stand up, doesn't seem very comfortable on the feet. Carl Roberson by default has the advantage standing, but he's also not he's like not a bad striker in general. He's got that kickboxing background, he's a southpaw, he's got a nice hard counter two, nice snap and jab, inside leg kick. He will throw the one two, but he kinda continues advancing after he throws the one two, or if he overextends on a two, and he kinda pulls himself into the clinch, which is mind boggling why he does it. Does it so often. Uh, but yeah, like we'll um we'll get into the, the grappling situation with Carl Roberson in a second, but for Nick Maximov He's, um, as I said, like, on the feet, he's just looking to level change just for the takedowns. He likes the single leg entry into a double on the fence, looks to, you know, dump you on your butt from there. But just very predictable with his level changes, just constant level changes. Tries to finish a lot of his takedowns on his knees. He'll kind of fall to his knees when he does change levels. Really easy to sprawl on. Uh, but yeah, likes the single leg, single leg on a scramble, low single, crack the low single down, try to get the opponent on the mat. On top, he likes to sit in half guard or guard and just land, you know, ground and pound shots. Likes to take the back of his opponent on all fours, but for Carl Roberson, just useless off his back. And uh, he's just very poor fight IQ on the ground. He doesn't have the best get ups, but he will look to be patient and just like wait for the opportunity to explode in like off bottom position like especially when his opponent's trying to advance position he'll look to explode uh, but if you just sit in his guard he's doesn't have too much in terms of technical get-ups also he will overhook he'll use this like overhook um on bottom position for some reason and it, 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 you're supposed to use it to get back to your feet but he doesn't really do anything else he doesn't do the next step which is required uh, so he just kind of hangs on to the overhook for some reason, and it's just asking to be arm triangled. And I think he's been arm triangled like two or three times in his career. But um, you know, one thing he could do when Maximov is stalling on a double leg is the Travis Brown elbows. Yeah, I think he's got a few finishes with Travis Brown elbows. Maybe he definitely got one against Ryan Span, who is also a guy that's notorious uh, for just stalling on a double leg on the fence. So it is there for him, I guess. How these guys lose fights, so for Maximov, he seems to gas if you make him work even a little bit for the takedowns. For Carl Roberson, poor takedown defense, poor bottom game, all four losses are by submission, poor get-ups, athleticism helps a little bit when he can explode and just kind of burst off, off his back, but just poor fight IQ in grappling situations. He always engages when he really shouldn't, when he should keep it standing, just engages with people who have the grappling advantage over him. Pass to victory for these two. For Carl Roberson, keep it on the feet. Just uppercuts when he's dipping, he's constantly going to be level changing. So just uppercuts there. At distance, if you're going to kick at all, make it a high kick. No body kicks or, level, or leg kicks because you'll be off balance for a split second. Gives him an entry for his takedowns. And just, for the love of God, just don't initiate this, the clinch or just grappling situations. Just please. Um, uh, yeah, his favorite takedown is a single leg, so I hope you've been training single leg uh, escapes and how to defend the single leg. If he's stalling on the double on the fence, look for Travis Brown elbows. For Maximov, get in top position. Pull guard if you have to. If, um, yeah, if, if you can't get him down with takedowns, just pull guard and look to reverse him from, from bottom position. So how I see this fight going. So before I looked into taping this one, I just, you know, kind of leaned to Maximov beforehand just because I just know how bad Carl's grappling is and I've heard from a few people that Maximov is a decent wrestler or a decent grappler or something like that. Um, but then I watched him fight and it was just really underwhelming. It doesn't seem like he has any striking at all, like zero stand-up. Predictably drops levels basically every time his opponent throws something, so he's always looking to counter a punch with a level change and it just gets really predictable. He's going to walk into a knee sooner or later. Even when he does get on the hips, his takedowns are sloppy as all hell. And he just doesn't look very good at all. I have a feeling that like, getting this guy a fight was a part of the Nick Diaz comeback fight clause. Like a stipulation in the contract or you know something like that. Because he's certainly not UFC ready. Uh, with that being said though, you know Carl Roberson, he's an awful grappler. 
So if Maximov can ground Robeson, then there's a decent chance that he can control him from top position. That was one part of Maximov's game where I, I thought was pretty decent. His top game, pretty good. You know, still isn't great. I feel like he's going to give Kyle Robeson opportunities to explode from bottom position with his athleticism. You know, he's, he leaves a lot of openings as well still. And I just feel like this is kind of a levels fight. Like, there's levels to this game. Like, and I think Kyle's going to show this in this one. Like, yes, Kyle has horrible defensive grappling, but think about who Kyle trains with on a daily basis and whose takedowns he's, like, defending on a daily basis. And then compare them to what you've seen with Nick Maximov. Um, I think he's going to be able to stuff the takedowns and kind of just rough him up a little bit on the feet. Yeah, so... Also, X Factor in this fight, the guy, Maximov, he trains at Nick Diaz Academy. Like, who's winning there? You know what I mean? Like, Nick Diaz, he hasn't won in like a decade. Nate Diaz wins like one in every four fights. AJ Agazam is like 500 or his record's like 3-3 three and three or something like that. Chris Avila is under 500. I'm not sure who else trains there, but there's not too many guys that win a lot. You know, all the guys are tough, obviously, you know, they pride themselves in their toughness, but these guys don't produce winners. <laughs> like, you're going to get a tougher mentality and probably, you know, a bit more uh, fortitude, but you're not going to win many fights if you train there, honestly, guys. Alright, so I do have Carl, and if you could like the video, that'd be great. I have Carl Robeson by TKO in round two. I think he should be uh, quite a sizable favourite. You know, he's the type of guy that you don't want to bet as a sizable favourite, but I think the line is a little bit off. I think he should be a bigger favourite. Um, just watching Maximov, yeah, just wasn't inspiring at all. And um, I think, you know, he obviously, it's a good stylistic matchup for Maximov, but just the level difference is is going to show itself, I think. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy to bet, Ma uh, what's his name, Robeson at minus 125 or $1.80. This price is fine right now. You know, I wouldn't bet him as a huge favorite just because he's a, a bit of a bell end, but, um, you know, he should win this fight, really.